Greetings fellow men, Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again and today I want to talk a little more about the German political class and the media reacting to Donald Trump. I did a video already but in uh, the last couple of days a lot more happened. So I already said that the conservative alternative media and the right-wing politicians congratulated him immediately. And of course the left-wing mainstream press is of course demonizing him. So nothing new on the Western Front here. Take here for example the cover of Der Spiegel saying just that uh, the end of the world is near because Donald Trump is like a sun crashing into the earth, swallowing it, I don't know. And then of course they say that women who voted for Trump have internalized misogyny. Yeah, I think we have all heard that before. But I want to focus on some cases that are a little more interesting than these generic standard reactions that we know from SJWs and the mainstream media also in America. So first I want to start with a, a traditionally more conservative, more centrist newspaper, Die Welt, and they still write critically about illegal immigrants and stuff like that. They're a little more conservative, but you know in 2016 everything that you thought was still conservative is of course infiltrated with communists left and right. Well, no, only left actually. So they did something that was really disgusting, I think, and I jumped out of my chair when I read this. All the other stuff, like Trump is Hitler, misogynist, racist, I know that already, that's boring. But this thing, I jumped out of my chair. Why? Because it works in the subconscious mind of the reader. And it is so nasty and so disgusting. So I have to explain a little bit about this. So on the uh, surface level, the article tells you about Trump's transition team on the way to form a new government. But the title of the article says this is Trump's team for the Machtübernahme. And I have to explain this to you guys. So Machtübernahme uh, literally means the takeover of power. So a transition of power, someone grabs, takes power. And this sounds like a normal word because, you know, Trump got elected, so he grabs the power, yes. But what you need to know is that this word Machtübernahme is synonymous with the word Machtergreifung. And these words are only and exclusively used in the German language to characterize the power grab, the takeover of the National Socialists in 1933 or some military coup, like some wacky general in the third world takes over power and uh, after that democracy is ended and uh, the country has been transformed into a military dictatorship. These are the only contexts in which this word is used. And if one uses this word in a different context, like in this case here, you always want to imply that it is like 1933, that democracy will be transferred into a dictatorship. For example, when left-wing media warns about the takeover from the right, they always use this word. So I did a Google search with this word and um, I never found a single hit in which this word was just used as a normal expression for characterizing the transfer of power between two governments. It literally, every single time you Google this word, every hit, it implies that some right-wing extremists or militant groups are violently taking over power and thereby ending democracy. This is always implied with this word. And the reason why I think this is so hideous and why I really jumped out of my chair is that this works on a subconscious level because the average German reader does not know that. And they, they instinctively know that because they never heard this word in another context. But if you would ask them on the street, if you would do a survey, uh, what is the context in which the word uh, Machtübernahme is used? They would say, I don't know, uh, maybe, maybe right wing, I don't know. So they read over this. They read the title and they think, oh yeah, Trump, Machtübernahme, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, okay, new government, uh-huh. But their subconscious mind will actually be reminded of the Nazis. So an article that openly calls Trump Hitler is okay, I think, because most readers would think, well, he is not like Hitler, or, well, that remains to be seen. But if you only associate him with the Nazis on a subconscious level, your rational mind cannot argue against it, and it sticks. 
And this is why this is so hideous, I think. Okay, moving on to the next example. So as I said, the um, liberals in Europe have still not learned their lesson, even after Brexit and even after Trump. There is one exception, though. It is Winfried Kretschmann, and he is the governor of our southwesternmost state, Baden-Württemberg. Uh, Baden-Württemberg is a very industrialized state. This is where Porsche and uh, Daimler-Benz, for example, are located. So they are big in the car industry. And he is a very communistic member of the Green Party and he is actually the governor. This is the only state that has a green governor. And this was only possible because Kretschmann, funny enough, he is also a Catholic and he is also a very conservative person despite being actually a communist from the Green Party. So he is actually not very much liked in the rest of the Green Party. Only in Baden-Württemberg people really like him and this is why they voted for him. All the other people in the Green Party think that he is like a conservative traitor or something. But he's basically representing the wing of the Green Party that Angela Merkel could uh, envision a coalition with. So what he said actually is we should not overdo it with political correctness. We should be careful not to go all overboard and full retard on political correctness. So he actually learned the right lesson. He is the one guy who uh, said this in front of a convention of the Green Party. And he did only receive moderate applause for this. And then all the lefties uh, took the stage and then there were standing ovations of course. So the Green Party is not listening to this actually uh, smart man in this context here, he actually got the right message, you know, that if you go overboard with political correctness, if everything is racist and misogynistic and homophobic, then people get fed up and these words will not have an effect anymore. They, the blade becomes blunt. And he realized that, but he only received moderate applause, and he's actually not very much liked in the Green Party. So that means uh, a few of them get it, but I think the liberals are too emotional. These commies are too far gone to actually uh, analyze the situation from a rational standpoint, and they will just amp up the vitriol and the hate and all this um, name calling. So. I actually think that we can repeat that in Germany because most of these left-wing people have not learned the right lesson. They still think if they just call more people racist, if they call more people women haters, then they have a chance at winning the election. But this is their Achilles heel, I think, because the normal average people are fed up with that bullshit. And now as my third and last example of more interesting finds from the media, there is a guy who should actually know all about it. He is a professor in the most left-wing University of Germany, the University of Tübingen, well, one of the most left-wing. It's tough competition, really. And he is a professor for media studies and communication. So he is a media expert. He knows all about social media, memes, trolling, and uh, all these messages, you know. He knows, he's a German who knows about Paper the Frog, right? So he, he studies this stuff. He's a very famous scholar in this field, and he writes a lot of articles in newspapers also, like this one here from the Zeit, a very left-leaning liberal newspaper. And you know, this guy is one of those typical people who never worked a single day in the free market. So now he is a professor for communication studies. So the title of his article is already setting the stage. He called his article Die Schuldfrage, the question of guilt. So who is to blame for this horrible disaster that Donald Trump got elected? So he's not hiding his true intentions. He's of course one of the bright Germans, one of the good Germans who hates Trump and he thinks he's literally Hitler. And in this article he gets some things right and I want to start with that. For example, he said that Donald Trump could only succeed because we are in a transition period between journalism that is uh, carried out by established mainstream media and critical journalists to the new unregulated media and he's kind of right about that. So he also said that Donald Trump uh, could get so much media attention because he is such an outrageous crass character and that is also true I think. The media was reporting that stuff because Donald Trump being that amazing entertainer that he is assured them high numbers of viewers and listeners. 
But this is as far as his correct analysis goes. He furthermore uh, gives the impression then that because Donald Trump had so much uh, media coverage that the media was actually on his side. Like he doesn't really literally say it but he implies it and that is ridiculous. All the media was against Donald Trump and to a German reader who doesn't speak English maybe this is basically misinformation to claim that the media was on Donald Trump's side or supported him. I mean, he means indirectly, but he doesn't make it clear in his article. So the message to the Germans is the media was with Donald Trump. And then he also said that Clinton tried to argue with facts and Donald Trump was stirring emotions. And yeah, is that really true? Clinton was arguing with facts? I don't think so. She resorted to name calling and weird Russian hacker conspiracy theories. And then in one sentence he reveals what he actually thinks. He said, Der etablierte Journalismus konnte die Grenzen des Sagbaren nicht mehr definieren. That means in English, the established journalism was no longer able to define the boundaries of that which can be said. And yeah, this is true, but he bemoans that. He said, <laughs> this is a bad thing. We have to either go back to a situation where only established government media, so to speak, are able to spread information, or we need to regulate the new alternative media. And this is what these liberals always call for, right? They want to regulate markets. And now they want to regulate the marketplace of ideas. They want basically that what is not published in established news cannot be a opinion that is legal to have for the citizens. In his world, the um, established media would maybe give you the choice of three or four generic political uh, opinions and the citizen can just can just choose one of them and if he has his own ideas his own opinions wow he's a racist he's a nazi he's a misogynist right that is the one thing and the other idea is what our government has already uh, said that they want to implement is that only if you disclose your full information you know your passport picture your home address your full name only then can you post something on the internet this is what our government already suggested and this is also something that these people who studied the old right and who studied the free marketplace of ideas and how disruptive it can be to our corrupt elites they will suggest that to our governments in order to save the establishment basically so this is um, I'm ringing the alarm bells here a little bit that these media scholars they're onto us I mean they know all about the old right and all about independent minds on the internet and they want to dry out the swamp so to speak they want to put an end to the free marketplace of ideas. They want to put an end to free speech. So the way I see the information at this point in time is that uh, the left establishment in Europe will not be able to read the writing on the wall. They are too wrapped up in the idea that they are the good ones and that the people must be on our side because we are the good ones. And you see this in all the mainstream reactions. So I picked some of them that are more informed, that are smarter, that are actually realizing what the problem is and how to combat the old right and us nationalists. But uh, I don't think their voices will be heard because the emotional um, state in which the SJWs and the left uh, mainstream is will just not allow them to listen to these voices of reason. And I'm actually glad because they will make the same mistakes that the feminists and the Clinton campaign and the DNC made in the US. And we will see in Europe that they will fall victim to the same weapon that uh, was slaying the liberals in the US. But nevertheless, I will not be content. I will still do my duty as a watchman and I will keep an eye on those left-winged ideologues and theoreticians so that we can react swiftly and accordingly and adapt our strategy. So bottom line, I am hopeful for the coming years that we will see some fundamental change in Europe as well. Have a great day. Servus, Kameraden.